Welcome to the world of animal allies, the doctors, volunteers, pet owners, and other surprising visitors who are out there making a difference. In Australia, life at the Chidlow Marsupial Hospital keeps the doctors busy. While in the Philippines, the largest shark of all puzzles scientists. This week's how-to looks at toilet training your dog. And in Animal World, the Madagascan lemurs dance their days away. Former vet nurse Liz Pelt has turned her home in Perth, Western Australia into a marsupial hospital. Unlike cats and dogs, wild animals don't respond well to life inside a typical animal clinic. So Liz opened her heart and home to the pouched patients. With help from volunteers, Liz can cope with most situations. But Dr. Ralph Hudson from a nearby vet clinic regularly drops in to keep an eye on her fragile fauna. Hi, Liz. Oh, hi, Ralph. Right, who have we got today? His first patient of the day is a young Joey. It was hit by a car two months ago, fracturing its pelvis and damaging its hip, leaving the Joey unable to walk. So he's been growing fine. And yeah, yeah, and he's slowly. happy and healthy, yeah. and um, but he's just very, very weak on his back legs. Okay. And, but I, th I feel that maybe, um, you know, time and physio. And he might. Maybe and he okay. might. He might be okay. So, it sounds to me like he can't. He's having trouble pushing with his. Um, yeah. Bottom part of his legs. Yeah. His, but, but, he, but he does, yeah. And see, so he had a fractured tail as mm -hmm. well. Okay, so and he's got this, a few. Yeah, this hock was horrifically infected when right. he came in. Oh, okay. Which has healed up quite nicely. Mm. It's left a nasty scar, but mm, it's certainly healed up. He's got a little kink there, but he moves yeah. his tail yeah. okay. Yeah, that was infected too. Mm. There was a nasty, nasty sore on there. Mm. That was going well there. Mm. And there was so crunching he, in here. Was there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. But it right sounds like one. he's it's getting right. the function back. It's all right, little one. Yeah. And he's pushing. He yeah, is, there he yeah. goes. Yeah. yeah. He's pushing. Come on. Push. He's certainly a lot, lot better than when we first let him out of the pouch yeah, after he'd... Oh, yeah. No, he's pushing yeah. with that one too. Yeah. So. so you reckon it's worth ca carrying yeah. on for a while? Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, well. So. Yeah. Second I mean, lease at of life, darling. Yes. <laughs> Not all the patients, though, are kangaroos. Crinkle is a common brush-tailed possum, seriously injured in a road accident. So it was to right-hand side, all the right-hand side, and I think that's that that's seized up. Okay. While Crinkle has physically recovered, the shock of the accident has caused him to become withdrawn, and Liz is concerned he won't pull through. Do you think so? You don't think he's in pain? I think while he's eating and that, but yeah. um, it's, it's hard to know what the long-term future for him is. Yeah, yeah. well, we, we're sort of aware that it may not be long-term, yeah. but he's just too he's quiet, like, yeah. and we're really... Oh, so he's all crinkly. Yeah, yeah that's too, why his it? name's Crinkle. <laughs> <laughs> Marsupials are experts at masking signs of illness or injury, because in the wild, it's a luxury to rest and recover. This is where the hospital comes into its own. I don't, you know, you've got to think of quality yeah, of life. Yeah, no, and, that's um, right. Yeah, if he's if he's suffering, then we've yeah. got to deal with that. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll try the pred and okay. um, and see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to see Crinkle put down, so Dr. Hudson prescribes anti-inflammatory drugs yeah. for his injuries. <laughs> no, definitely, yeah. Nothing more can be done other than wait and see. And it's in beautiful. A pair of adult quokkas in the hospital's recovery ward proves not all injuries come from humans. Quokkas are a rat-sized relative of the kangaroo, nearly almost all limited to a small island off the Western Australian coast. Before arriving at the marsupial hospital, this elderly, half-blind quokka was attacked by younger males. Oh, look at that! Now it seems his tail is being nibbled away by his roommate. It was fine, but um, but he's. He, he doesn't goes. see very well, you see. So I think he just sits there with his tail in the hay. And she chews on it. And she chews on it. I was wondering if there's any new sort of maybe a plastic or. Yeah, that yeah. would be good actually. Yeah, that, and would, that would last pr probably a little bit longer enough for it yeah. to heal up. Let Ralph have a look at your eyes and don't bite. I just think he's got him pain. Right. Whoops, too late. <laughs> he is off. Introduce you to our latest little miracle, Ralph. 
lucky to be alive. Normally, the echidna is a shy and solitary animal, but Sparkle, who was badly injured by a car, now seeks the company of others. She recovered, and I think that she's just forgotten everything that happened to her before she came to us. Right. She's just amazing. Yeah. The car um, can see what went broken. right the way across her shoulders. She yeah. was paralysed in this leg. Mm -hmm. The foreleg and the hind leg on that side. She was bleeding from the beak for about three days. So she's obviously had damaged lungs. Yeah. Hello. Hello. As Dr. Hudson is leaving, Liz receives an emergency phone call. It's her friend from Leonora, a mining oh, town in Western Australia's outback. Yeah, good. She has an injured yeah, Joey you? that's not feeding well, yeah, so fine. she's arranged for a special delivery. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, when would you want to send it down? Well, mother was hit? Yeah. Yeah, Friday will probably be fine. In Animal Doctors Part 2, an injured Outback Joey has flown thousands of kilometres for emergency treatment. is definitely beautiful. At least that's the mantra of dedicated animal helper Dr. Scott Urquhart. His passion is the biggest of them all, the largest shark, in fact the largest fish in the ocean, the whale shark. It may be the largest, but biologists know very little about the whale shark. What they do know is it's in desperate need of protection. They are a species of concern. And the reason is that we don't really know what the population sizes are. We know there are certain factors perturbing the populations, but we have so little information on the species that we have to be a little worried when we see populations being harvested. Dr. Urquhart's fears are well-founded as millions of sharks are killed year in and year out for dinner tables, restaurants, and the worldwide retail market. He's concerned the losses to fishing in some parts of the world may be irreversible. Everything that we've learned about shark populations, and in fact, all of these large, long-lived, slow-reproducing vertebrates, indicate that they do not deal well with high harvests. And to say that just because we don't have enough information, that we must therefore be allowed to continue to harvest them at unregulated rates is foolish, in my opinion. The situation is so delicately balanced, Dr. Urquhart believes an immediate and total ban on whale shark fishing is imperative. He says nothing less will enable science to accurately determine how many whale sharks are left and how often they reproduce. When you don't know enough to manage a population properly, then you're better off not utilizing that population until you do. Because every time we've tried it the other way, where we said, well, let's just go ahead and take some and find out what happens, we've done it wrong. The decline of all fisheries in the world are an example of why those previous management scenarios were improper. Sadly, these majestic creatures might be confusing the very scientists who are trying to help them. Because of their awesome size, Dr. Urquhart suspects they cruise over thousands of kilometers and that means attempts to count them may be falsely inflated. He fears the same whale sharks are being counted more than once as they travel from one part of the globe to another. To test his theory, he's tagging whale sharks and tracking them by satellite in waters off the Philippines. The transmitter sends a signal, very low wattage signal, about a quarter of a watt, to one of four polar orbiting satellites. These satellites then use the signal that it's receiving to determine its location on the, on the surface of the, um, of the ocean. And ultimately, that's what it's all about for this hard-working animal helper, understanding. The kind of detailed understanding capable of bringing a species back from the brink. So Dr. Urquhart and his team continue to gather and record information piecing together vital clues to the survival of a true gentle giant of the deep. Oh, 
After the break, Animal Allies takes an intimate look at the lemurs of Madagascar. And will the marsupial hospital's latest patient bounce back? Toilet. Good girl. Teaching your Bear. dog to poop Toilet. on command is Good not girl. as difficult as it Bear. sounds. The key Toilet. is patience Good and girl. praise. Animal Allies Guide to Toilet Training. Good girl. Dog trainer Tim Scrine is teaching Bear to go to the toilet outside. Tim girl. starts the training by walking Good Bear girl. on a leash to a designated area. They stand Good here girl. for four minutes while Good a command girl. word for Here's going to the girl. toilet is introduced. Bear. Toilet. Bear toilet. Bear toilet. If you want the dogs to go to the toilet, you could use toilet, pee pee, whatever you like. The main thing is to be consistent. Use the same word all the time. If within that four to five minute period the dog does go to the toilet, there will be a lot of praise. Toilet. Well done, bear toilet. Otherwise, Good I'm going to keep repeating bear. the dog's name toilet. and the key Good word. Girl. In this case, toilet. Girl. The trick to praising your dog is to pat it in one direction, the from the top of top the head, head and down the back. Down the back. When we praise the dog, we want to keep the dog relaxed, cool and calm. This allows us to imprint as much information as possible across to the dog. If we praise the dog by rubbing backwards and forwards or patting vigorously, it will excite the dog. This means the dog won't be taking in as much information as what we would like. When the dog does go to the toilet, well we will what step up girl. the praise, we will increase the praise up. And good strongly girl. link in the word. Good toilet, good girl, well done. Toilet, good girl, well done. Toilet. If your dog girl. refuses to go to the toilet, take it back to the good same girl. spot every well half done. an hour until good it does. Girl. Here's a good girl. Good girl. What happens Thank is we slowly condition the dog to going to this spot. We need to take the dog there after a big play, after a big feed, after a big sleep. There are three occasions where the dog is likely to need to go to the toilet and every half an hour. Remember to scoop up your dog's feces from public areas and from your backyard to prevent the spread of worms. Good girl, Bear. Good girl. Here's a good girl. So for this week's Animal Allies How To, pick a toilet area for your dog. Take the dog to this spot at least four times a day. Introduce a command word for toilet. Praise your dog when it goes to the toilet and pick up after it. These amazing creatures are all members of a very select club, but it's not a club anyone would want to join. It comprises the most critically endangered group of species on the planet, the lemurs. The tiny African island of Madagascar is the only place in the world where lemurs live. It's one of the poorest countries on earth, and its land is under constant pressure from logging, burning and farming. Charles Welsh of the country's Rehabilitation and Environmental Education Centre says the lemurs are all too often just seen as a nuisance. They're simply in the way of progress. The biggest threat is deforestation, plain and simple. Uh, whether it be for slash and burn ag agriculture, um, planting of hill rice, whether it be for burning pasture land for cattle so that you get a good green growth on the new growth on the grass that the cattle like to eat, whether it be cutting trees for making charcoal. Uh, all of these are, are serious problems. This loud morning call carries for kilometers. It heralds the start of a new day for Madagascar's flagship species, the largest of the lemur family, the Indri. The Indri is a sociable creature. They're often found in small family groups of mother, father and their young. The Indri is highly territorial and its dawn song informs other groups of its location. It's hard to believe that this shy nocturnal creature belongs to the same family as the gregarious Indri. But this is indeed a lemur, the mysterious Ai Ai. 
its bizarre third finger can be twisted in any direction, handy for grooming and eating. And the eye eye, which was once thought to be very, very rare, is turning out to be not so, not so rare after all, and, and is even found in, in near village areas living in trees that are left around tombs, for example, um, where people just don't see them frequently because they're nocturnal. People aren't usually in the villages, aren't usually out at night, and so they don't usually see the eye eye. So they're really a lot more eye eye, and they're more widespread than people once thought. The really threatened species of Madagascar are the larger lemurs, like the comical-looking ringtail. They hang out in large groups. It's not only threatened by the slash and burn of forests, but also by a cruel quirk of nature. The female ringtail can only successfully mate on one day a year. With an ever-diminishing number of potential partners, its future looks grim. With the loss of their treetop homes, you might imagine lemurs don't have much to be happy about. Someone apparently forgot to tell these little fellows, the world-famous dancing lemurs. Their correct name is Verocifica, after the person who discovered them. The Sifica has enormously powerful hind legs and can leap an amazing 10 meters from tree to tree. But it's this unique sideways dancing that makes them so endearing. Curiously, scientists haven't been able to discover any special significance behind it. The lemur two-step was first thought to be a novel way of attracting a mate, but it now appears to be just an alternative way of getting from A to B. It's a form of primate which once existed all over the world. The isolated population here in Madagascar has essentially stayed the same, hasn't really developed as have the, the monkeys on, in Africa and South America. So you essentially have a, a, a living fossil that's, that's um, um, uh, diversified into all sorts of uh, niches in, in forest habitat or savanna habitat. It's, uh, it's a really unique island uh, with, with a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of future, hopefully. Joey has been urgently flown in from the Australian outback. Its mother was killed after being hit by a car and the little fella hasn't quite recovered from the traumatic experience. He's not eating and is severely underweight. Vet nurse Liz Pelt is at the airport to take the Joey back to her marsupial hospital for immediate treatment. Though flying is the quickest way to get a patient to Perth, the cold at high altitude can also cause further distress. So Liz is eager to check whether her patient is okay. The Joey is a Euro wallaby, a smaller relative to his bigger cousin, the kangaroo. He might be out of his comfort zone, but he's still got plenty to say. <laughs> Must be a Euro. It's a Euro. <laughs> Liz is unsure how to deal with the Joey's injuries, so she calls Dr. Ralph Hudson. Oh, hi, Ralph. It's Liz. Um, I've just had a Joey brought in that uh, his mother was hit by a car, and um, I'm just a little concerned about it, and I was wondering if I could possibly bring it down for, 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 um, for you to check it over. Good. Yeah, so who have we got here? Just a little Joey that we picked up from the airport. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to bring, bring the little fellow through? Okay, so we'll just check his arms and he, he hasn't been like coughing or. Well, he's he's apparently not taking his bottles too well. He's um, so maybe his lungs. I I'll get you to listen to his lungs actually. Okay. While I'm, all right, mouthy. All right, little one. All right, little one. There we go. With the Joey not feeding properly, Liz is concerned he may have inhaled milk into his lungs. I think they've had him about three days. This oh, okay. can cause pneumonia and is usually fatal. Dr. Hudson <laughs> checks the Joey's lungs. Fortunately, his breathing is fine. That sounds all right. Yeah. Not this much. 
Stop oh, okay, <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, it looks alright in there. It doesn't look yeah, like he's being damaged no. at all. Yeah. Okay, let's have a feel of his tummy. I guess, um, just see how he goes over the next mm. few days. Well, I think, yeah, mm. keep an eye on him and yeah, we'll just see, see how he goes. See how he feeds, feeds. yeah. yeah. And if, um, the good news is that Jerry's so fine. For now, he will return to the marsupial hospital under the caring hands of Liz. We have released sites eventually for Euros down here, so eventually it will be released. Um, but she was a little bit concerned that it wasn't feeding very well. So, um, you know, she sent it down for a more experienced um, opinion on its feeding. Um, Liz will see how, how he goes with the feeding. Um, and she's got all the tricks of the trade there to get him to feed, so um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Okay. As the gap closes between the city and the bush, it's often the wildlife that's caught in the headlights. But it's the endless work of people like Liz that brings hope for the future of Australia's wildlife. The more education we do, um, there are more and more people who do stop and check. Um, most people, most people care enough to stop, um, enough to do something with the babies. In the next program, the world of animal allies returns when paralysed pets are given a set of wheels. And there's an amazing discovery in Brazil, a new species of monkey. There are ways to make it.